From a philosopher's perspective, how do you see the problem that we are faced with as of today, and how is it different from the past issues that human kinds have faced with? And what's your perspective, Mike? Are you optimistic that we can navigate this challenge? That's a rather big, big question. So first of all, I'm extremely poorly qualified to like answer these questions about what is going to happen. If you just look back at the very dismal track record people have of predicting the way the future is going to go as far as social and political trends are concerned, it's obviously much harder than predicting the climate, which is hard enough, or predicting the spread of COVID, which is also, of course, extremely hard. I mean, so many epidemiological models about the spread of COVID have proven just like completely wrong. One thing I think that just makes it very difficult is that there are bound to be some quite dramatic consequential discoveries or developments in the science of AI in the relatively near future, which we just can't anticipate because they just don't flow naturally from what we have already. Someone's going to make some breakthrough or some radically new piece of technology analogous to the development of the transistor or something like that will be discovered. So I really don't know where things are going, but I would have thought there's no reason to be particularly pessimistic. I'm generally in the glass half full camp rather than the glass half empty camp. And, you know, there's certainly a huge potential for good with these new AI technologies. That's great. Well, I would like to ask you, actually, if I may, what is your answer to the question that you just asked me about the future? As you said, I can't be any better than any child kind of pointing to what's, what's going to happen in the future. But I feel like that we are asked to think about the implications and the social impact at what we are doing much more than what used to be or expected to 20, 30 years ago, which means that I think it's important for all of us to be prepared to answer those questions, being equipped with right frame of addressing those questions or kind of thinking about those social impacts. Because I think that's a kind of tool that the engineers or the people who run the companies can have societal impact to learn before they deploy any of the algorithm that can have impacts. So I think it's more and more important for us to educate our undergrad student with those tools so that when they are placed in this world of chaos and uncertainty, they can actually frame the questions and navigate in a more responsible way. Right. Just, well, it's very encouraging that you say that people like you need to say precisely those sorts of things. I think we discussed a lot of like that we don't have the right answer for like telling what is right from wrong, what is bias, what is fairness. Whereas we expect for machines and algorithms to be equipped with all those judgments to begin with. Does that mean that the traditional way of developing new technology and proliferating the society with the technology has to be changed? What is the role of more societal dialogue to come up with consensus and understanding of what we're getting into and the role of philosophers and ethicists? Right. So one question is the role of philosophers. Another issue that you were touching on is really about how much decision-making we're going to offload to artificial intelligence or supercomputers. In many applications, the AI is just used as a tool for extracting various patterns from the data or ordering the candidates along some dimension or a variety of dimensions. 
And then it's some human that's going to take this data and make the relevant decision. So one very abstract issue is, in what circumstances are we going to let the machine actually take the decision and say, you were sentenced to six months in prison, given your previous recidivism record and history of crime. The machine makes various predictions about whether you're going to re-offend and then some human is going to look at the output and then just not slavishly follow what the machine says or recommends, but make his or her own judgment. That's one issue. And then a totally separate issue is what role can philosophers play in all this? And actually, maybe this would be a good point to say something about MIT and the Schwarzman College of Computing, mm -hmm. since this yeah. is where I and my colleagues have been involved a lot in these issues. Of course, we have the NC Ethics of Technology Fellowship, thanks to your generosity. And that position is occupied at the moment by someone called Kevin Mill, who's at MIT right now. And he's teaching our Ethics of Technology course, which apparently is way oversubscribed. So there's a lot of interest mm -hmm. in these issues among the students. And MIT Philosophy has another Ethics of Technology postdoc funded by the Dean and this division in the Schwarzman College called CERC, the Social and Ethical Responsibilities mm -hmm. of, of Computing, has three more postdocs. So there's a lot happening just at MIT as far as the ethics of technology goes and philosophy has a big hand in all this. And I'm sure this is being replicated in institutions of higher learning across the country and also across the world. So there will be a lot of public facing philosophy in this area in, in the years to come. And also the number of jobs, another sort of leading indicator, the number of jobs advertised in the ethics of technology has gone from virtually zero to quite some high number in a very short period of time. So this is certainly something that the discipline of philosophy is seems to be embracing. Right. In addition to that, do you envision that deployment of technology that may have broader impact to society has to be changed? For example, should there be like ethics review to check up on some of the uh, intended consequences? Yeah, sure. I mean, we already have that in science in general, your ethical review panels for research mm -hmm. and so forth. And I think something like that in the case of technology probably would be probably would be a good idea. Incidentally, there are, are a bunch of case studies in the ethics of technology, which MIT has posted on the CERC website, which are free to everyone right. to use, and they're just being added to constantly. So that's a, it's a useful resource for anyone wanting to learn more about these issues. Right. So that's why I'm really excited to work with MIT on this topic. And I hope that society can catch up faster. Yeah. Well, thanks again for your support. We really appreciate it. No, thank you for all the good work. Progress. <laughs>